This podcast deals with issues about LGBT families and trans-specific topics. We would love to hear from you and welcome your questions and comments. However, we will not tolerate any discriminatory language or hate speech. So please, just don't do it. Enjoy the show! As parents, that's kind of our job to uh, prep her for that. Um, and, you know, my parents had to do the same thing. Um, you know, I grew up in a biracial um, family. You know, my mom was white. My dad was black. And, you know, we had to have talks about, you know, dealing with race when I was growing up. Um, and this is, you know, more of the situation she's going to be dealing with because this is this is where we find ourselves. But as parents, what you have to do is just be very honest about that and... Um, let her know, you know, this is the way things are. This is really a normal situation. Um, and some people out there are mean and, you know, you don't, you know, be, have your guard up constantly, but you be aware that it, it's a thing. When we were kids, we met at camp. After college, we got married. Ten years later, we finally had a baby. That same year, I came out as trans. This is the story of our journey. Through marriage, parenting, gender, and all the changes that life brings. This is Our Our Life Life in in Transition. Transition. everybody. Hi. Thanks for tuning in again. I am Shannon. And I am Rachel. Um, and uh, this guess... is episode three. Episode three. Yeah. You're still here. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we're still here. I didn't give up. Yay. You didn't give up. I did not. <laughs> We've been over this. It takes a lot. Yeah. But um, so it's quiet in here now. It wasn't 20 minutes ago. It was kind of chaotic. <laughs> We have shipped our daughter to my mother (laughs) so that we can record in peace. Yeah. The the only way we actually are capable of ever getting the podcast recorded is um, with the assistance of some some babysitting from my mother-in-law. So kind of where credit is due. Thank you very much. Um, Because otherwise we wouldn't be able to do this. She was a crazy pants today. Yeah. um, I, I don't know. I don't know what her problem was. Her problem was... That I wouldn't let her set herself on fire in the kitchen. Well, that's just, I mean, I guess that's responsible parenting, but, you know, that's just rude, really. I know. I, it was it was very mean of me. And uh, so we had a little temper fit, you know, because we couldn't kill ourselves. Because we're almost two. Yeah. She's starting early. I'll give her that. Mm. Yeah, she's not giving us any credit. Maybe it'll be over early, though. It, pff, fat chance, but, you know, we can dream. Give me hope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> leave, leave me with some freaking hope. <laughs> right now, my only hope is the beer that I'm drinking. <laughs> that sounds really bad. You're going to have to edit that out. I, 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 I don't mean, want people to think I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> my child makes me drink. I mean, and that's probably the most relatable parent thing that we could possibly say. <laughs> but... Um, you, 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 need, you needed a little, little something to, to, to chill out after, yes. after after that. She was insane yes. today. But um, so today's podcast is about parenting. Yes, parenting. It's it's weird to some extent saying that because why? It's it's one thing to because we don't know what we're doing. Nobody knows what they're doing. Yes, that's the secret. That's mm. the, that's the secret to parenting. For anybody who's out there um, wondering what it's like to be a parent if they are not already, um, yeah, just nobody has any idea what they're doing. That's the secret. Nobody. It's true. Even experts, they don't know. Yeah. 
No. Everybody's just winging it. But it's just, it's weird. Um, on the one hand, it's kind of become normal now to, um, to actually parent, but pausing in this and titling ourselves parents feels weird still. Um, at least for me, it feels weird to just go, I'm somebody's parent. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, because I've always been, see, for me, it's not weird because I've always been the mom friend anyway. Well, that's, that's true. So, like, I'm used to taking care of people. That's what I do. I take care of people. I take care of people, and that's why I drink. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't understand why you're laughing. I, I you know, I... <laughs> I'm, okay, I'm not going to argue with you. Um, but, so, I mean, it took us a long time, um, until we actually had, um, her, one of the things that happens when you're, um, when you first get married is immediately, then everybody wants to know when you're going to have a baby. And Uh, the answer is none Yeah, basically. It's not your business. We'll have a baby when we want to have a baby. Um, and it took us a little while to get around to it. Um, I think it, ultimately it was the right time um as far as us having some more of our ducks in a row than when we were younger and first got married um i don't even have ducks (laughs) i have squirrels (laughs) and it's chaos well and then suddenly i said i'm not even a duck at all i'm a chicken so um i i it wasn't good timing with, with 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 my coming out um at the same time but um so i mean yeah having a baby is is challenging um it starts off, you know, that she's just a little person that, you, you know, you change and, you know, you hold and cuddle. And then at some point, um, they become, quote unquote, independent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I think the, uh, what was the term that they used at daycare? I don't know. The point is, our child now has opinions. <laughs> Yeah, and um, her favorite word now is no. It's not okay. It isn't. <laughs> yeah, it's it's weird when um, you find yourself every day getting into s- some form of argument with a person who is wholly irrational. Um, I mean, besides Shannon. <laughs> I'm not irrational. I'm creative and artistic a cover for being irrational <clears throat> silence um if i was silent the podcast would be over that's true please don't please please, please don't do that. <laughs> right okay i would do this by myself um, right but um well i mean the biggest challenge of being a parent is keeping a small opinionated human alive i mean and happy to an extent, because apparently I'm the meanest person in the world, again, because I wouldn't let her stick her head in the oven. I don't know. But, like... Well, it was warm. It's 90 degrees out. Again, a rational person. <laughs> At any rate, there's a lot of challenges that everybody faces. Being a parent, you know, little everyday arguments. Eat your vegetables. No. Time to go to bed. No time to let the adults watch tv i want more elmo and that's tough for every parent and every um human who is a caretaker of another being right and then you heap on to that our situation which is a little bit extra it's unique right unique (laughs) yes um and that brings more challenges absolutely um so the challenges of, of being a two-mom family. Um, well, it's difficult, too, because some people don't necessarily know that I'm transgender upon first meeting us. So it there are different takes that people um, sometimes read us with. I mean, a lot of people... Um, w- well, it's nice on the one hand because it means that I'm <laughs> they're reading me correctly, which is nice. But... Um, a lot of people read us as, you know, just a cis lesbian couple. Um, and so there's a lot of confusion. Um, and then they get real personal. <clears throat> yes. Which is also not okay. 
Like, people just accept the fact that we have a child. You, you don't need to ask about the mechanics of how the child got here. And, I mean, there's... Like, you don't have to ask about that ever. Not just with same-sex couples or, you know, single parents or anything. Like, you never have to ask. Just accept the fact that they're a parent and move on. And, and the thing is, too, I mean, there could be any number of reasons. I mean, we could have done, um, we could have done in vitro. She could be adopted. Um, she could be from a previous relationship. But um, people who didn't know us before my transition um, ask a lot of questions. Um, it's rude. And, and, and people who knew us before my transition, um, some people have had difficulty with wrapping their heads around the fact that I'm not dad. Um, yeah. Which, on the one hand, yes. I mean... Trust me, our daughter has no problem with it. Because before she could talk, Shannon was mom. I was mom. We've always been mom, mommy, mama, some version of that to her. Pretty much. It's like, you know you know that clip from Family Guy where Stewie is pestering Lois for five minutes? And then when she says what, he just says hi? Yeah, that literally happens to us on a daily basis. Mom. Ma. Mommy. Mama. Mama. Ma. 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 Mommy. Mommy. Hi. <laughs> it's true. Um, and it depends. What she calls us depends on her mood. Because mm-hmm. um, there's... Whoever is her favorite for the day is mommy. Mommy, 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 mommy. Whoever is not her favorite is mama and, you know, various versions in between. But we're both mom and it's fine. I know that there are a lot of uh, people in the community that kind of struggle with this, especially if they've transitioned when their kids are a little bit older. Absolutely. Um, trying to figure out what to be called because, um, and I think a lot of, a lot of women and, you know, I make no judgment here, but a lot of women want to be very territorial about I'm mom, you know, the term mom belongs to me because I have always been mom and it's a unique role that is mine. So they don't want to give up the exclusivity of the term. So there's a lot of trans women who are trying to navigate what to be called now that dad doesn't really fit. We, um, blessedly, did not really have to do that. So that's not even really an issue. And I mean, I'm sure it'll come up later on. Um, I'm sure when she's in school, there'll be questions about our family structure and things like that. But right now, we're just mom. And I don't have that territorialness because I was not a mom before this transition started. Or much before this transition started. So I don't have that feeling of territorialness, that uh, exclusivity of the term. I'm just as happy sharing the momness. <laughs> Of it all. You know, I actually do wonder, though, if there is um, any similar um, struggles in in families where um, mom transitions into dad. I, I wonder if that, that cuts the same way or not. Um, I'd be interested to hear from anybody out there um, who's been going through that situation, kind of, you know, what your experience has been. But I'm not, I'm not sure myself. I don't really know because the, most of the people in my support group are... Um, going the other direction. Right. Um, so I have less information about that. A couple of people um, that I have uh, talked to um, just use their name. Right. Um, but that's really for older children, too. That's not, you know, Yeah. a two-year-old, you know. Um, and, and one of the things about um, having to deal with this question... Um, is that, I mean, not only is it clear on the surface that, um, hey, this, this child has two moms, um, but, you know, getting into the weeds of that question actually incidentally outs me, um, which is not the greatest thing in the world. Right, because, you know, obviously we want people to know that 
our daughter is as much Shannon's as mine, you know, biologically. But at the same time, it puts us in the position of having to explain more than really needs to be explained. Right. I mean, if anybody actually, like, Googles us for, like, two seconds, I mean, they'll find this podcast and a bunch of stuff about me being trans. But, um, so, I mean, it's, there are a lot of aspects which um, you have to learn how to navigate, learn how to talk about to people, um, learn how to explain, unfortunately, um, where in if this had been a situation where I hadn't transitioned and everybody was just reading us as mom and dad and, you know, those questions wouldn't be there. Yeah. And incidentally, why wouldn't those questions be there? Because just because you have a mom and a dad doesn't mean that, you know, it's their biological child that they have. There are step parents. There are foster parents. There are adoptive parents. There are, you know, all different kinds of... I don't understand why this is just... A, okay, I'm ranting, but I don't understand why this is just something that we have to deal with. And and, and it's, it's something that... Nosy people. <laughs> well, and it's something that, you know, people should just take you as you are on face value. I mean, to that point about um, step families, uh, I mean, we have that situation in my family um, where... You know, my dad is a step parent to one of my brothers, and my mom was a step parent to my other brother. Um, and I, you know, just a couple months ago, I was talking to one of my friends, and he had no idea that my brothers had any different parents than than I did, because um, it just never came up, and it was never um, an important aspect. Just this is my brother, and this is my other brother, and that's the way it is. Because it doesn't matter, right? Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Maybe we missed the boat on naming this podcast. Maybe this podcast should have been called It Doesn't Matter because we say that a lot. Um, and that's and that's that's kind of a big takeaway with a lot of um, with a lot of questions and issues that that we are discussing is that by and large, if people just were accepting all around, these things wouldn't be an issue and they don't matter. Mind your business. That's that's the bottom line. If you see a couple with a child. And you don't understand? Mind your business. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> Thanks again for listening to the show. If you like what you hear so far, subscribe so you never miss an episode. Also, be sure to share with your friends and family so they can enjoy as well. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. As far as trying to raise a child in the situation that we now find ourselves in, um, on the one hand, people should mind your business. <laughs> but um, at the same time, um, we do have to deal with it because it's we don't live in a, a, a mind your business world and... Um, we have to explain the situation to our daughter and, you know, we have to explain it to um, other people and we have to deal with possible repercussions of people not necessarily taking that well. This is true. Now, we've been very lucky thus far. Um, I mean, we've had some stumbles within our family um, along with, you know, the... Uh, dead naming that occasionally happens has happened we've gotten uh the mommy and daddy thing and then a oops thing although that's gotten a lot less yes. right? people have gotten more used to it 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 was a lot worse early on but i mean as far as like uh daycare is concerned you know we we've, right. we've uh we've kind of lucked out it's we been have, great yeah we have some very accepting people at daycare and they love our daughter and our daughter loves them which is super super great she kind of uh, took over that daycare i'm not gonna lie she did <laughs> she did um because she's adorable and she knows how to turn the adorableness on even when she's doing something awful she did. <laughs> one of the things though is that within these types of situations at least i think we found that 
Um, and I'm sure that many other people have found the same situation where you kind of have to navigate your way through it um, on your own. There's not a ton of resources out there um, to help guide you on how best to deal with these kinds of situations. At least not that we know of. Um, not that we've found. And part of our lack of resources and stuff is, again, because we live in a conservative desert. Right. Um, we live in an in, in LGBTQIA plus desert. Although, maybe things are changing. There's yeah. talk of pride. You know, maybe next year there'll be pride here. I don't know. But yeah, I think there's there's there are more LGB, LGB there are more LGBT people um in the area than perhaps we're aware of. Um but it's just that they're not as visible. Um but I think that's changing. I think they're yeah. going to start, you know, coming out of the shadows. Right. Um, in our area and hopefully there'll be more resources and more understanding, you know, from the general public about, I guess, what they would consider non-traditional families. Diverse families. Yeah. Well, um, they would say non-traditional. Yeah, I know what they would say. Um, but so, I mean, in that vein, we don't necessarily interact with similar families. Um, we have some friends. But, you know, they live a bit of a distance away, so we don't see them often. Um, and it can be difficult to try to figure these things out from scratch. So, I mean, I think going forward, what we're thinking about, at least what I'm thinking about, is, um, you know, as our daughter gets into school uh, and more social situations, um, is trying to explain why we're a different kind of family than everybody else's. And hopefully, you know, we won't be in a situation where we're dealing with bullying or anything like that. But, uh, you know, that's the kind of stuff that, that concerns me uh, going forward. And, of course, I always see around um, Mother's Day and Father's Day, you know, they have, you know, the kids fill out, a little form about their mom and you know what are the things that your mom likes and draw a picture of your mom and stuff like that and then they do the same thing for father's day which i don't understand because not everybody lives in a two-parent house but you know i don't want our daughter to feel left out of activities because she doesn't have anything to do on the Father's Day activities and she has too much to do on the Mother's Day activities and maybe she feels like she has to choose who to celebrate on Mother's Day or right. something like that. So, um, again, go back to the daycare. They were really good. You know, around Mother's Day, she came home with two different um, little Mother's Day things that they were making. Yeah. Um, she came home with two pictures, for one for each of us, which was really great. And they didn't really do much of anything for Father's Day necessarily, although maybe they just didn't do anything with her specifically for Father's Day. I don't think she was left out of anything, but I don't think they did anything. And even on Mother's Day, they had a little party and it wasn't for mothers. It was for marvelous people. You know, there was a, a party for the special people in our lives, you know. So, you know, I think they're sensitive to it. But once she gets into public school, eh, who knows? Well, you know, that's as parents, that's kind of our job to uh, prep her for that. Um, and, you know, my parents had to do the same thing. Um, you know, I grew up in a biracial um, family. You know, my mom was white. My dad was black. And, you know, we had to have talks about, you know, dealing with race when I was growing up. Um, and this is, you know, more of the situation she's going to be dealing with because this is this is where we find ourselves. But as parents, what you have to do is just be very honest about that and um, let her know, you know, this is the way things are. This is really a normal situation. Um, 
and some people out there are mean and you know you don't you know be have your guard up constantly but you be aware that it, it's a thing i just hate the fact that we might have to deal with that that just it it just bothers me that we have to prep her for people being assholes i i know uh it's, it's something that um i know from my parents and i know from other um other people that i've talked to um having that talk with your kids especially when you have um children that the world reads as uh, a black male um that you have to you have to be aware of the way society um might very well treat you um and those are not pleasant talks and those aren't talks that any parent wants to have to have with their kids and god willing one day we'll live in a future where you know that won't necessarily be a thing um we won't the world is gonna end it's gonna burn up well yeah i mean we live on an island so we're gonna float away in 12 years but um and similarly with you know lgbt families you have to have the same kind of talk and um i think because we are starting from the ground up with her understanding us as mom and mom um we might have a little bit of a easier time having her being acclimated to it and then and also you know going into the schools and and just being mom and mom and you know it's a little easier than you know being uh having mom and dad and then uh suddenly the next year at the same school you have mom and mom right you know it's things are going to be easier in that respect yeah it is pouring outside i don't know if you guys can hear this but it is um there is a deluge um i told you the world was ending (laughs) Um, I mean, it was right on time, too. As soon as they said it, it started raining again. I know. I need to get my raft. Mm. Um, Here's the other thing. We were talking about this the other day. Teaching tools that are age appropriate. Um, one of our friends, just after we were talking about that, posted a whole list of um, books. kids' books about gender identity and the LGBT community and um that's fabulous and maybe we can link to it yeah we can definitely put that in the show notes um but that's something that hopefully um will be more common and you won't have to dig so much to find resources that are age appropriate to explain what's going on to young kids well and one thing too one advantage that we do have um is that we live in new jersey um, and New Jersey actually just made it um, that in the education system they have to teach about LGBT history. So it's, yeah, I, I, I think going forward when she is older and in school, I think that it's going to be um, more of a mundane. Yeah, this is just the way things are. If we can still afford to live in New Jersey, there's that. Um, but I, I think the key for us, and I think our approach. Um, is to not really make it about um, how different we are from other families, but just... That this is our normal. This is our normal. Um, And while some people may label us non-traditional, we're going to label ourselves as diverse because that's what it is. We're just a family and this is the flavor that we are. Um, And... The flavor, in case you're wondering is chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. We're Neapolitan. I love Neapolitan. I know. I know. It's my favorite. It's so good. You can have it. I know. I'm on a diet. Anyway. um, (laughs) But, and then just, you know, and we're just going to do everything we can to make sure that she's the most prepped, educated um, child. Um, She's going to be one of those know-it-all kids. I mean, she already is a know-it-all kid. But, um, (laughs) yeah, but she's going to have like facts. Yes. She's going to have facts. Yeah. Um, right now she just thinks she knows everything. That's true. 
Um, and then just, you know, we're going to be open with her about everything. everything. And, you know, we're going to just teach her to be honest about the way things are. And that's, it's not anything to be ashamed about. It's not anything to try to hide. It's not something to whisper about in, in corners and, and try to conceal from people. It's just the way things are. And just as she wants to be accepted as just the way it is, you know, we hope that we'll be teaching her at the same time that she needs to accept people where they are. So I think that's the bottom line. But as we said before, nobody really has it all figured out. Parenting is an adventure. We're going on an adventure. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And it's about that dangerous. I mean, yeah, true. Sometimes she acts like she's a dragon. She rouses her and screams. Hmm. If she could spit fire, she would. Probably. There's probably people out there going, what the fuck are these two idiots talking about? You don't know our kid. <laughs> she's very um, feral at times. <laughs> feral is the, is the word. Um, she can usually be subdued, you know, wave some milk in her face. Wave, wave some milk in her face. Hug her, calm her down, talk, talk nicely in her ear, and then she'll calm down. What we're saying is she needs to be restrained and drugged. <laughs> with milk. With milk. With There's milk, nothing no in the milk. Yeah. It's, just, it's, just, you know. Sweet, sweet trip to Pam. Milk and hugs. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But while you're hugging her and giving her milk, it's also entirely possible that you'll get bitten. That's true. Because she's two-ish. Yes, and she kicks, and that's not great for me right now. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and the other adventure in parenting, just to keep this in mind for all of you would-be parents who are maybe thinking about parenting, get used to bodily fluids. (laughs) That's all I'm going to say. You just have to get used to them. If you got a weak stomach, get over it. Yeah, you get over it pretty quickly. You still haven't gotten over it completely. I'm not completely. I'm much better than I used to be. You are. I don't like poop. Or vomit. Or vomit. I deal with snot much better than you would expect, though. You're used to it. That's true. I'm a very snotty person. <laughs> As you probably can tell listening to me sniffle on this podcast. Mm. It's a sinus infection. <laughs> yeah, in case you were wondering. <laughs> Go watch my video about how I'm sick. Um, but yeah, so um, it's a learning process. Um, this is a on-the-job training. Um, that we kind of have to figure out as we go along and, um, you know, we're going to do the best that we can in order to make our, sure that our child is, um, kind, loving, accepting, and, um, and lives to their 18th birthday. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's it. Cause that's your main job. Although right now she probably won't move out till she's 30. That's okay. Cause I like her. Yeah. It doesn't end when they're 18. Yeah. Ask, ask our parents. <laughs> Are we done? Um, I, I think we're about done. Um, this is a much shorter, less rambly podcast than what we recorded last time. So I don't have to do as much editing. And, that, and that's nice. That's nice for me. The last one was your fault. Well, maybe. It was. Okay, fine. She doesn't know when to stop. And here we are. <laughs> okay, so... Um, yeah, I guess that's it. Well, so there's a lack of resources. We have a lack of resources. Everybody else in the community has a lack of resources. If you have resources, put it in the comments. Shoot us an email. Email us. Yeah. Let us know because we would be interested and we will certainly pass that along. Absolutely. If you do email us. Um, because it's definitely a, an issue within the community um, getting good resources for trans parents and other non-traditional families. Diverse. Diverse families. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you for listening. Yes, thank you very much. Um, Take care of yourselves and each other and we will... We'll see you next time. See you next time. No, we won't. We won't see you because this is a podcast and if you're watching us... That's creepy. No, we're watching them. We didn't say they see us. We'll see them. No, no. No. 
Nobody's watching you. Please don't be afraid. Jeff Goldblum is. Jeff Goldblum might be. <laughs> but we aren't. <laughs> what are these people talking about? Okay, that's enough. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you again for listening to Our Life in Transition. This show is hosted by Rachel and Shannon McDill. Our producer and editor is Shannon McDill. Theme music is Seize the Day by Jens Kilsoft. Check him out at jens.kilsoft.net. Support us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash olitpod. That's forward slash O-L-I-T-P-O-D. Your support makes this show possible. Thank you.